The St. Augustine Lighthouse is the next stop for painting and travel. Sarah walks inside the huge Fresnel lens and learns of its history as Roger uses acrylics to paint the historic landmark. The St. Augustine Lighthouse is perhaps the oldest brick building in St. Augustine. And you may wonder, why do the lighthouses look different? Well, if you're a mariner and you're out at sea and you spot a lighthouse, you'll know by the pattern, the way it's painted, exactly which lighthouse it is, and then you'll know where you are. So take a close look at this one. You'll see there are two black swirls going up, which will identify it as the St. Augustine Lighthouse. And it has a beautiful red top. Take a look. James and I are standing here in the fuel house, and this room in particular is where the lighthouse keeper kept his log. This is his office, and he and his assistants would fill it out and record everything, making sure that the light was burning properly. And James is an historical interpreter, and he walks the grounds here and answers questions. And I have a question. I'm wondering what was going on here during the colonial period. Well, St. Augustine is North America's oldest maritime seaport, and the challenges of getting into this harbor meant that they would uh, need lighthouses here. Uh, in that time, people from many lands came here, worked together with the Indians, and built what we now know as St. Augustine. I see. And what are some of the lands people came from? Well, you would have had people here from Spain, uh, England, France, Germany, in different time periods, of course. And many people in the Spanish world are coming from the islands, um, making their homes in La Florida. Yes, in La Florida. Thanks for talking with me. My pleasure. All right. In 1936, the lighthouse became electrified, so there was no more need for carrying the heavy fuel upstairs. And uh, the position of assistant keeper was eliminated. This room is the oil storage room, and there are 100-gallon containers that stored the oil. Now, between 1874 and 1936, they used various types of oil, even lard at one point, uh, and then they went to kerosene, which makes a very smoky residue when you burn it. So the keeper was quite busy cleaning the prism of the lens. And look at this bucket. Look how heavy this is. This was carried up the stairs several times a day by the keeper and the assistant when it was his turn. For a while, the lighthouse fell into disrepair. The keeper's house was even burned. Someone managed to shoot some of the prisms in the light and ruin part of it. But the Junior Service League took this on as their project. And in 1980, they began raising money and well over a million dollars to restore it. And the restoration is beautiful. And I can't wait to take you to the top so you can get inside the lens with me and take a look around. We're going to join Sarah in the lantern room in just a little while. But right now I'm going to get started on this painting. I'm using an 11 by 14 inch piece of masonite covered with gesso. I'm using acrylic paints. I'm using titanium white, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, and Indian yellow. Now, I'm in the shade today, which is really nice. I would always prefer to paint in the shade, yet I can't always do that. And I'm also using an umbrella, and this will keep the uh, light off this painting as it shines through this tree. There's nothing worse than having light streaks shine across your painting while you're working outside. I want this painting to be quite precise and very hard edge today. So this is a good subject for that. I've got this hard line here on the roof and of course all these hard lines on the lighthouse. And I think I'll start by painting the sky. We have a brilliant blue sky today. So I'm going to take my cerulean blue and white 
Generally, I mix a third color with my sky color, but it's just a very pure color today. And I'm going to spray my board so my paints will flow over this easily. Now, right down here, it's going to get warmer. So I am going to add a bit of yellow in this area. This will be cooler. This will be warmer. I sketched the lighthouse in pencil. And unless I put this paint on really thick, these pencil marks will show through. So I won't uh, lose my drawing here. In fact, while I'm doing this, I'm going to put some of that blue color right on this side of the lighthouse. That's the shadow side of the lighthouse. That will just give me that cool tone of the shadow side to begin with. I'm going to put this paint on thick enough so it covers well because I don't want this painting to look weak. I need to put on enough paint to cover this and yet still be able to see my drawing. And after I put this paint on, I can take a light touch of my brush, brush this way and that way, different directions to smooth that out nicely. Yeah, that smooths that sky out. There's no clouds in the sky yet this morning. And I think that's nice because it will make a nice strong design on this painting. Now, as I said, I'm going to take yellow, Indian yellow, this is a transparent yellow. Some Indian yellows are not transparent, but this one is. I like the transparent yellows. Now, that gives me my warmer color at the bottom. I'll wipe my brush off, and then I can blend these easier. I have to do this pretty quick because these acrylics dry very fast. Sometimes it happens that when these acrylic paints dry, they seem to thin out all by themselves somehow, and it's possible that I would have to go over this sky again back in the studio. I hope that won't be the case. That's one reason it's really important for me to blend this out and sort of check it over to see that it's covered well. Now I've got very hard edges, of course, right on the side of this lighthouse, and I want to keep those hard in this particular painting. I'm going to let this background dry and then I'm going to work on this lighthouse. I want some very hard edges on this and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a few minutes. While that's drying, I'm going to work on this house right here. Now this of course is in shadow. It's a white house, but I'm squinting my eyes and I'm trying to figure out what color it is. And I've said this many times, but it, it, it's, it's always true. It's hard to know what color something is when it's in shadow, especially something like this as a, a white building. So I'm squinting my eyes and as I look at that, I, I'm seeing that it's warm. It's a warm color compared to the sky. Okay, we've got a warm color there. And I also like to have my paints right next to where I'm painting. This way I can very easily compare the color I'm mixing with what I want to put on my board. So here I can see very quickly without looking down on a palette somewhere else that this is a very warm color as in compared to my sky. I'm going to put this on very thin here for a couple reasons. I'm, I want my pencil lines to show through, but this area here, I want to be very flat, the sky. Here I want some texture. Now this uh, blue is starting to dry. It's not quite dry yet. I do want to spray this because I want to get some textures of this water spray in there. So I'm just going to take my hand right here, hold it over here so I don't get droplets of spray up here. And that way I didn't get any water on my background. Now I sprayed that because those water droplets are going to absorb some of this wet paint here. And I'm going to dry my brush off, wipe it off very good, and I'm going to drag my brush over the side of this building. And what I'm doing is I'm picking up those little drops of water, and it's leaving me with some nice texture here. I may be doing a bit of a disservice to this beautiful building here because I'm giving it a bit more weathering than it actually has but I think that's acceptable. 
This is almost dry, not quite. I could put it out in the sun and that would dry it in just a minute or so, but it's drying quick enough for me here. While it dries, I'm going to make a dark color with my alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. That will make a purple color. I don't want it purple, I want to neutralize it, so I'm going to put some yellow in it, my third color. With this dark color, I am going to lose some of my drawing and some of my detail. But the nice thing about working on location is it's right here for me to see. Since we live right here in St. Augustine, I look at this beautiful lighthouse every day. And uh, sometimes at night when it's raining hard and we've got some fog, it makes some incredible patterns in the sky. I'm not going to put any white in this. I think maybe I did put some white in there, but I'm going to keep this kind of just, just transparent for now. Now, of course, that gives me a whole lot of texture there, which I don't want. So I'll wipe my brush off and I'll just with a light touch, smooth this out. Well, this sky color is totally dry. So I'm going to take some of this blue painter's tape and put it right on the edge of the lighthouse. I don't have to do this, but on this particular painting, I want this to be very crisp and sharp. So this is one way to accomplish that. I'll rub it down, but sometimes this paint will seep in underneath the tape. So one way to correct that is either take some matte medium, some acrylic medium, paint it on there and let it dry. That will seal the edge of that tape. I don't have any matte medium with me right now, so I'm going to mix some color that's close to this sky color, as close as I can get it, and I'm just going to paint the edge right there. And then if anything seeps under, if any of this paint seeps under this tape, it really won't show because it's the same color as the sky. I'll let that dry for a moment or two so that seals up properly. Blizzard and crimson, cadmium red, light. I'm going to mix those two colors and I'll put in this beautiful red at the top of the lighthouse. This is, this is just one of the most beautiful lighthouses in the entire state, maybe in the entire country. It's just, it's a gorgeous lighthouse. This uh, combination of this black and white stripe with the red top is just outstanding. Now I've got a dark color on here and I'm going to use this as my base color. Then when that dries, I'm going to put some lighter reds on this side and maybe some darker reds on this side. I have to keep in mind my perspective. Of course, I drew this out earlier, so I'm not having to concern myself with the perspective so much at this point. Of course, the perspective is always a good thing to keep in mind, even after I've drawn it, because as I look up at this lighthouse, it's like taking this lid to this cap. If I'm looking at it straight on horizontally, it's totally flat. As I go up, I see the underside of that lighthouse. If I go down below the horizon, I'll see the top of this cap. All the glass up here appears to be very greenish in tone. So I'll make some blue and yellow. And again, I'm going to leave this thin. I'm just going to put a wash of color in there. What I'm trying to do right now is just cover everything, get everything covered. Just going to wipe my brush off and smooth this, smooth that out there. Okay, I'm sure this is dry by now. So I think I'll start by putting in the light stripes of the lighthouse. There's actually two white stripes and two black stripes up here. It looks like there's just one, but there's actually two. Well, down here, the lighthouse is, of course, catching all the bright sunlight from the sun here, catching it on this side. On this side, it's bluer because it's catching the light from the sky. So I'm going to mix up some white and Indian yellow. 
Now we'll move down here to the lighthouse. Of course, this side of the lighthouse is catching all the light from the sun. This side here is catching the light from the sky. So this side is going to be very warm. This side is going to be very cool. So with my white and yellow, Indian yellow, I'll mix up a nice warm light tone. And I'll put this first stripe in here. Now the light side of this lighthouse is darker than the sky. So even though it's a cool color, it's going to be slightly darker than the sky here. Put that color right in there. That will be the shadow side. And while this is still wet, I'll wipe my brush off and I'll blend these two together. Now the, the brightest part of this lighthouse is going to be right about here. So I'll put some white in there. It won't be pure white because it's going to be mixing with the yellow. Now the reason this is the brightest part is because of the way the light is reflecting off that lighthouse. You might think the brightest part might be on the very edge here, but it's not. What's happening is the light is hitting this side and it's reflecting at a 90 degree angle right at me. So if you were to take where the sun is, hit it at the edge of this lighthouse, it would be bouncing off and hitting me right about in here. Now we'll mix up some dark color with ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson. Now these are black stripes, but even though they painted that with black paint, if I were to paint this with black paint, it would not look right. It would look dead because it's getting all the influence from the sun, the sky, even the trees down here. The trees are going to reflect some green colors up into there. This is pretty high up where I'm painting now, so there probably won't be any green influence there. But believe me, it's, it's down here towards the bottom. So we've got ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. That makes a very, very dark, dark color. I may put just a touch of Indian yellow in there to neutralize it. Okay, now my other stripe will be right here. All right, now I'll take the same color and I'll put it right on this side. So that'll be my second dark stripe. Well, even though these are very dark stripes, there is a light and a dark side to these as well. So we'll keep this very dark over here and we'll make this side to the left lighter. So I'll put some white in that color, that purple color I just mixed up. And I'll add that right here. I might go into this with a little more depth later, but for now, let's take this tape off and we'll expose our that nice hard edge on there for the lighthouse. Yeah, I like that. That's a good hard edge what I want. I'm going to change gears here and I'm going to uh, paint the edge of this roof, which is a, a dark green color. So as I'm looking at this wood siding, the very shadow right under the wood siding is very warm. So I'm going to mix my red and yellow and some blue here, but I'm going to keep it very warm. That's where this overlaps. I've lost some of my lines in here. I can see a few of them. So I'm going to strike a few more in here. And with a cool color, we have the shingles coming off the roof. They just lift up. It's getting these small details in here that's going to make the painting interesting and also, and also fun to, to work on. Right at the top here where this red is, we have a real bright highlight. This is a good example of where I was explaining where the brightest highlight is. And here you can see it very well at the very top here. It's not at the edge of the lighthouse like you think it might be. It's where this angle, the sun hits and then comes at me and that's right about there. And you can see it very distinctly. We have some real bright areas. Also right up here where the sun is hitting the, the glass on the outside of the lantern room. And I'll mix my dark reds and I'll put that shadow right under here. Comes down dark right there. With a small pointed brush, I'll take kind of a yellow warm color and put a few of the 
lines right there between the glass. Now, as I look carefully at the lens, I can see up in here at the top of the lens. It's a bit darker in there, so we'll put a few dark areas right up in there. And then right down in here, we can see the sky again. I want to keep that green color, but I'm going to mix up some cerulean blue and white and just indicate some of that sky that I can see right through the glass. Here with my dark color, I'm going to indicate these couple of windows and just suggest some of these supports here. Okay, now I'm going to put this dark band in around the bottom. And when I put this band in, I have to feel this oval go around from one side to the other. In other words, I just don't make an arc from this side to this side and have it stop. I have to feel this with my brush. I have to feel it come around here and go over to the other side. Even though I don't paint it all the way around, I'm feeling this oval come around in here and it goes back under. Same way on this side, comes over this side and goes back under. And that's how to get that nice oval. I don't want that to just be an arc from one side to the other. It has to feel like it's going all the way around. Well, I think there's going to be an event here later on today. There's quite a bit of activity happening in here. I'm going to take this painting back to the studio and we'll put the finishing touches on it there. Well, I made it up the 219 steps to the gallery area here with Paul, who works here at the St. Augustine Lighthouse, of course, and he's going to show us the first order for Nell Lens, yes. which requires another 10 steps, I guess, up to the top. It does, yes. <laughs> Down at the gallery level, we're still a level below the lens. And tell me about the lens. Well, our lens was made specifically for this lighthouse in the 1870s in France. It uh, has 370 individual pieces of glass that make up the entire lens structure. Um, and we're one of the few lighthouses that still has their original first order Fresnel lens in it. You could probably see the light up to 20 miles away if you were on a ship out at sea. Oh, that would be incredibly helpful then. Yes. <laughs> that yes. Would keep you from running up on the shoals or uh, missing your, your turn. <laughs> Absolutely, it does. I know that the lighthouses have different patterns on the exterior. Um, what about the light? Are there different flashing modes? That's absolutely really? correct. Uh, if all, this, all the light flashes at night were the same, then that would kind of defeat the purpose. So at night, each lighthouse's signal flash is different. Originally, the lighthouse was turned by a clockwork mechanism, and uh, the light flash was every three minutes, um, because the lighthouse keepers would have to come up and they would have to rewind the mechanism. So they didn't want to have a, a really fast flash that they would have to come wind every 30 minutes. I so see. they would all want to come up every couple hours or so, and to do that, they had to have a three minute flash. Once we switch to electric power and we have an electric motor that turns the lens all day long, um, they shorten the, the interval to 30 seconds. I can't wait to get up there and get inside and see how big it really is. Great. Well, we've wound our way up the last leg of the stairs. Another fabulous view from up here. And we get to go inside the lens now and we'll really get a chance to feel how roomy it is. I have to wait for my timing here. Okay, let's go. Well, it is tremendous in here. It certainly is nine feet tall, I can tell that. And here's the bulb. It's amazing to me that this size bulb, combined with the engineering of the lens and the rotation, can make such a bright light that goes out so far and can be seen 25 miles. The lens has three bullseyes, and I'll show you as they go by. And the three bullseyes, when it comes to the right point here with a the, with the bulb, makes the flash. Here's one here. You can see the round lens. There's the bullseye. So there would be a flash and then a rest period. Being in here, it's very warm. As a matter of fact, it's scorching hot. And it reminds me of when I was a Girl Scout and we would take out our magnifying glass and put it between the sun and a little 
pile of dry twigs and try to make some smoke. And that's what it feels like in here. I feel like the twig and this lens is reflecting the sun and it's tremendously hot in here, well over 100 degrees. Well, I'm back in the studio and I've taken a few minutes to put some finishing touches on this painting. I'll show you what I did. Even though the lighthouse is just across the street from us, I did take a few photographs of the lighthouse and I put them on my monitor here so I have good reference to work from. I started by working on the lantern room and putting more details in this area. There were very warm colors up here and I put an indication of the Fresnel lens. I added some highlights here and I added these railings. I also added a bit of sunlight glowing off these panes of glass right here on this side because the light was heading this way. I lost all the detail of these corbels, these supports here, so I took my pastel pencil and I carefully drew them back in. Then with a small brush I added the detail. Right here on the lighthouse tower I added some more blue colors here, almost the same as the sky, added that same blue tone right in this area. And right in here I added this highlight. I noticed that there wasn't very much contrast between this building here and the sky. So I mixed up a wash with primarily blue colors and I applied that to the entire structure of this house. Sarah and I love the St. Augustine Lighthouse. It's a great place to visit and a great place to paint. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.